Hey, folks, I wanted to follow up on uh, a video I posted earlier, which is called uh, Neo Stock Technical Analysis, Neo to be Delisted. And frankly, I was trying to do a couple of things here. One, I was just sampling around with SEO, search engine optimization, clickbait for the most part, uh, but also to do like a, a test of the mentality of the market and the speculative stocks, which Neo was certainly one of. And the results were, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I was surprised. So I posted the video, went to the gym, came back, and I took a look at the results. And the ratio of likes to dislikes was pretty dramatic. I mean, this is probably the one of the worst ratioed videos that I ever did. And it, it doesn't bother me any. What, what was interesting were the comments. Now, there's one guy who is weird, I guess, because it doesn't show up in the comments. One guy spammed me. This guy here, Dennis Scotch channel. I can't click on his channel because I think he blocked me. <laughs> I don't even know who the guy is. Commented, dude, close down your account. You got bad videos. I think that's why maybe YouTube blocked the comment for using foul language. Then this guy here, Mohammed A, stupid delisting is not even a subject with Neil. Well, I just made it a subject, and it is a subject. Two, actually three, Simon Admonson, not a chance Neil will be delisted. Biden is not going to allow an EV vehicle company to be delisted. The agenda is clean energy moving forward. If you would have watched the video, Simon Adamson, you would have seen it that I said that after the 20th of January, if it is going to be a President Biden, the risk of any delisting drops dramatically. Watch the entire video. Don't get triggered. So, and I think the triggered word is what triggered me mostly is that it's obvious from the comments that are being made that nobody watched the video. They, they heard one negative thing and they didn't hear the entire message of, frankly, I'm bullish on the shares. I think that they can go up higher. But people got triggered and they don't appreciate the fact that with the swipe of a pen by the president, Neo need not be trading 15 days from now. That's a fact. Let's walk through why. Before we talk about this article, let's talk about our environment that we are in. There is a war going on right now. And that war is really going to go uh, full bananas on the 6th of January when Congress meets to ratify the election. And there's a war in the deep state between the Trump administration and the deep state. And to think that it's going to be ignored, that the proximate cause of what's going on right now is not being driven by China is you're being sorely mistaken. All indications imply that we had foreign meddling in our election. Mainstream media won't speak about it, but it's out there. You can ignore it at your own risk. Now, add to that, COVID, over 200,000 people dead this year alone, or last year alone, because of COVID. Last Friday, to the articles, three Chinese telecom giants were delisted. China Mobile, China Telecom, China Unicom of Hong Kong. They will be suspended from trading between January 7th and January 11th, according to the New York Stock Exchange. So some may be saying, but bah, these are telecom giants. Well, think about it. Here's an article that goes back to May, published by the Wall Street Journal. Trump may push for Chinese companies to follow U.S. accounting rules for stock listings. Chinese companies are not held to the same standard as other U.S. domiciled, publicly traded companies. Why do they get the benefit that these companies do not? And when you have a president that is in fuego right now, who is ready to have a scorched earth policy before he leaves office, if I were him, if I'm out of office, I'm, uh, even though I may not have 100% proof of the fact that the Chinese are involved, if there's a fraction of a percentage that they were involved or that they benefit, I'm going scorched earth. 
And if he holds these companies to be held to the same accounting requirements as U.S.-based companies before he leaves office, these, these companies better prove that they're able to be traded on U.S. exchanges because they're being held subject to U.S. accounting requirements. And you may be saying, you know, Bob, if he does it now, Biden will reverse it immediately when he comes into office. That's true. He could do that. The however is, is that he will automatically be branded as a toy, a puppet of China. He already is being branded that. And God forbid one of these companies blows up and he had already signed off on reversing Trump's executive order. Things are going to get real, real, real fast in this economy and in the stock market with these stocks. They're very, very speculative. Fast forward, if you want a more recent article, and frankly, not just an article, it's the passage of legislation through the House of Representatives of requirements that Chinese companies be held to the same accounting rules as U.S. companies. Now, I'm not saying that NIO or any of these other companies that are traded over in China will not meet U.S. requirements, but there is no way on God's green earth that all of these companies that, for me, I don't trade these companies. I don't trade Chinese listed stocks, not even Baidu, because I believe that the Chinese Communist Party is, in fact, a crime family, a syndicate, and that once they are held to the same requirements as U.S. companies, you're going to see who's been swimming naked with your money when the tide goes out. So when you're thinking about your stock and you're emotionally invested in it, that's a horrible position to be in, especially in an environment where we're already very overbought in terms of technicals, also expensive in terms of historical price to earnings multiples, and also when you take a look at contrarian indicators like the bullish sentiment index, here's where we closed out 2020. We hit highs on bullish sentiment not seen since Q4 of 2017. So multi-year highs, a lot of complacency, a lot of bullishness out there. The calls versus put ratio is at multi-year highs. So beware if you're triggered about little bits of news that may mess around with the delusion, you're too emotionally invested with the stock. And this is a business. It's not a game. It's not a game of hope. So start doing your research on these companies. There is a threat out there. I only did it as a goof earlier when I spoke about NEO. Now I'm being very, very serious because there's a problem. If you don't realize that these companies are not held to the same accounting requirements as U.S. companies and you're all in on them, folks, margin debt is through the roof. And once this goes, once we get the inevitable correction, you're going to hear the giant sucking sound of forced liquidation. So be very, very careful. Don't get too emotionally involved with these stocks. And with that, hope to see you tonight, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday Night Futures Live. Talk to you then.